All right, so we're talking about the teaching space here. The, the space in which you teach is where you present your business. So there's a few things we really need to think about. So, let, so let's just dive into this. So the different places people might teach include rehearsal studios, music shop rooms, schools, a hired space such as a church hall, privately owned studio, a teacher's house, or a student's house. Now, if you're using a, a shared or a rented space, what you can do to affect that space is limited. Obviously, you should make sure it's presented well, it's tidy, there's nothing inappropriate in that space. So, but there's, you know, there's only so much you can do, but make sure you definitely do that. If it's your own space, there's a lot more you can do. Um, but again, it's along the lines of making sure it's presentable and appropriate for the people you're teaching. So let's, let's go a little bit more specific about this. So if you've got a private space, it's really, really important you present this really, really well. Um, you know, people are coming to you, and again, a lot of your students will be children. Parents need to feel comfortable, the kids need to feel comfortable there. And when it's your own space, it's, it's very easy to get a bit blasé about it, because it's like, yeah, I'm just chilling in my, in my garage or in my front room or whatever. But this is now also a business space. Um, I always remember when I was, uh, I don't know, 14, 15 or something, and I, and I had some lessons at school, and I went for some extra lessons with the guy at his house, and he was living with his mum, and the drums were in his bedroom upstairs, so I guess he probably wasn't that old looking back, but to me he was a big grown up because I was a kid. But the drums were in his bedroom. So when I think about it now, that's kind of already a bit weird, right? You, especially in today's age, we're a bit more aware of this stuff. And I kind of remember that he had just like dirty washing strewn around, his bed it wasn't, didn't smell great, it wasn't that clean. It was kind of weird. Um, at the time I didn't register, like obviously I didn't, I had a different outlook on life then and you know I wasn't if I was a parent I'd probably be pretty concerned about that now at the time though I just remember I think it was a bit weird and I never went back I never went back it just didn't feel right and certainly as an adult that would be weird and I suspect my mum probably didn't come in because she knew he was my school teacher at school so she probably thought it was all good there but you know I think if a parent went into that environment they would definitely freak out and they wouldn't go back Okay, so I'm not suggesting that guy was a weirdo. I'm pretty sure he wasn't. But he wasn't thinking very professionally about how he, how he did that. And that really isn't good long term. You can't run a business like that. So if you are teaching from home, can you teach in a different space? You know, and, and it's totally fine for this to be a home thing. No one expects you to be in some plus, you know, mega studio somewhere. But could it be in a downstairs room? And you can kind of shut the doors so it's not, you're not being disturbed by other people in the house but it's not your bedroom, you know, and it can be nice and presentable. And also if it's a bit more open, so there are other people on the floor and it just feels a bit safer, it feels a bit better. Being closed away in the bedroom is really weird. Um, and the more I think about it, the weirder that seems now. Even though it was totally fine, it was all good, it just doesn't create the right impression. So, you know, maybe think about a different place. But there, so there are a few simple things we can do to make it look really presentable as well. So make sure it is set up and ready to go before the student arrives. We've already touched on that. Um, make sure it's clean and it smells good. Remember my little story there about that dude's bedroom. Um, you know, if you've got smelly shoes in the room, get them out, put some air freshener on, or you know, make it feel nice. Make sure there is nothing inappropriate anywhere in the room, right? So you might, you might have some, I don't know, it might, be, it might even be an album cover with a topless woman on it. It could be anything. It could be a t-shirt with some swear words, or I don't know, just make sure there's nothing in there that's not gonna look professional. Um, you know, make sure the room looks interesting. So maybe you could just put some interesting drummer pictures up or a picture of, a poster of rudiments or, I don't know, something relevant, some of your favorite bands. I used to have some pictures I, I like to some, some of my favorite drummers in chronological order. I just printed them out from pictures I found on the web, put them in cheap frames, and it really cool, it was a bit of a talking point, and we could sometimes go in to talk about those drummers and go deeper and start looking at their style, so, so that was quite cool. Um, make sure you have everything to hand, we've already touched on that, and make sure it's warm and comfortable, you know, you don't want people, you know, a common place to have your drum kit is in a, in a, gar a garage, make sure it's not freezing cold and they're shivering, because um, that, that won't go down professionally. All right, so these things might seem obvious to you, 
but they might not seem obvious to other people. But it's, it's, it's really important to cover it. You know, this is all about how you position yourself as a drum teacher. So let's talk about, you know, let's imagine my teacher when I was 14 and he taught from his room and wasn't taking that very seriously. And I left there and I wasn't happy. Then the next guy I called up, imagine I went to his place and it was really fresh and all, and he had materials all ready to go and he did a really good engaging lesson. His place was really smart and clean and he had some cool drummer posters and there weren't like dirty socks hanging off the cymbal stands. Um, who am I gonna call next? You know, which guy am I gonna go to? So you wanna position yourself as that really professional one that's giving the best service. Not only will people start recommending you, so the word of mouth stuff will grow your business, but also you could, you'll find you can charge a little bit more because you're offering a better service, right? So you'll get more students, you can charge more money, your business will grow. It's really just doing the basics, but it, so many people fall short in this area. All right, so something to think about. As always, if you have any questions, give me a shout.